Today, we have this joyous wedding to celebrate. Now, often when we think about weddings in our North American pop culture, often in movies or romance novels, the wedding, and they will have accumulation of the love story. The couple will meet, and they will have some challenges to undergo, something that will threaten to keep them apart, and then some adventures that will bring them back together again. And after the couple defies all odds and are decided that they're going to be together, their love takes them to the altar into a wonderful wedding service. And then after that, all we hear is that they, of course, live happily ever after. This is perceived as this pinnacle of a relationship. But Calvin and Elizabeth, I know that you've met and you had some challenges and adventures in staying together and you've decided to do it. You've come all the way from India to be here and you've moved from, from the U.S. to come here. You've, you've truly, in that storybook sense, have done all that you can to be together. And your desire for love and to love one another all the days of your life have brought you to this point today. However, I have some bad news for you. <laughs> You've chosen to root yourselves and your lives together and with Christ as one in God. And we know that with God there is always a happily ever after for each one of us. But if you know the stories of scripture, which I know you do, you will know that in the stories of scripture, there is never any just happily ever after that takes place. All the people's stories in scriptures have ups and downs to them. Rarely does this perfectly happily ever after ever exist. Your life together, which you are starting today, is going to have some twists and turns. It's going to have some ups and some downs. All of us have those in our lives. It's part of being human. But with those, you will have other great challenges and other great adventures and other great joys along the way as well. So instead of gathering with you today to celebrate the pinnacle of your love together, we're gathered here today to celebrate the start of your love together and all that will come after it. And today, as you, make, you pledge your vows to one another, you're going to pledge to love one another till death do you part. That's a long time. And I hope that as you live your life together, you're going to remember these stories of the people of God and to trust in God's faithfulness, and to not ever get discouraged if things aren't ever rosy. But more than that, however, more than hope and more than faith, what we heard from our reading today, that out of these three theological virtues, faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. And why might this be so? Well, faith, as defined in the book of Hebrews, is believing in things not seen. And hope is the expectation of something great to come. St. Paul writes in his letter to Titus that we are waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Love, however, is different. Love is something that we could see. Love is something that we could witness. And love is something that we could experience in the here and in the now. Love is something more than something that we just believe in. It's love is something more than something we just hope for. Love is never just an emotion or a feeling. And it isn't because love is the definition of God. It is the key characteristic of God. Love is God. God is love, says St. John. And we love because God first loved us. 
Love is a verb. It's an action. It's something we do day in and day out. Sometimes it's hard to describe love. Or on the flip side, sometimes it seems so flippant, it doesn't really have any meaning. People can say, I love life. I love the color blue. I love avocados. But what does that mean? I can think of what children would say, well, you might love those things, but you wouldn't marry them. Our scripture, however, gives us a very different definition of love. A love that comes from God. A God who unites himself with us, just as you will unite yourselves with one another. St. Paul writes what love is and what love is not. Love, he starts off, is patient. Being patient means being slow to anger. We heard Jesus say this today. Being patient means sometimes being willing to turn the other cheek, to bear with another's imperfections, faults, or differences. And we are all called to be patient, to give people time to change and make room in their lives for mistakes, and not to come down too hard on them. To be patient is to bear with one another and to lift the other up. Elizabeth and Calvin, in your life together, be patient with one another and forgiving of one another. Love, St. Paul also writes, is kind. Kindness really is patience in action. The Greek word comes from a word meaning useful. And the word was sometimes used to describe a mellow wine or people who are gentle, who have the ability to soothe hurt feelings, someone who's able to, cu- to calm someone when they're upset and to help quietly in very practical ways. Our church is filled with kind people. And so you have many people here to learn from. But a kind person also shows kindness in response to harsh treatments. And we hear Jesus speaking of that today in the gospel. That we are to be kind to even those who are not kind to us. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same thing. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great. Put kindness above all. Kindness motivates others towards positive change. Calvin and Elizabeth, in your life together, be kind to one another. Be gentle and encouraging. Find ways to assist each other daily. As we look at what these attributes are, love is patient and love is kind, St. Paul then goes on to tell us what love is not. Because sometimes we need that reminder. Love is not envious, he writes. Envy is jealousy. And it has its root in greed and selfishness. Wanting more than what we have and thinking that we deserve more than what we have. It stops us for for being able to see the blessings that are right in front of us. It stops us from sometimes being able to see the good that we have. Be happy with what you have and appreciate each other. St. Paul also writes that, and they also stem from selfishness and are really, in a way, are the flip side of jealousy. Jealousy is wanting what someone else has, But bragging is trying to make others jealous about what you have. Jealousy puts others down, but bragging tries to elevate the self above others. When you brag, sometimes you try to think of all your great accomplishments. It's easy to say things like, after all I've done for you, this is how you treat me. But that's not what love is about. Not according to St. Paul. Love isn't about tearing another person down. It's about building them up. And that's what you're called to do in marriage, to build each other up and make each other stronger. Which brings us to this point, that love is not rude. 
It's so simple, isn't it? Love has good manners. And the reason sometimes I think that we're not courteous is, of course, is that when we're thinking about ourselves, and I could say that for myself, I feel like I am the most rude when I'm kind of thinking about what I have going on and I'm self-absorbed with all my own worries or stresses when I'm tired or when I'm frustrated. But what we're challenged to do is sometimes get outside of ourselves, to be there for one another. Jesus challenges us, love one another as I have loved you and as you wish to be loved. Love by being courteous, polite, tactful, and sensitive to the feelings of each other. Remember these words of Jesus. God is kind. He's kind to both the ungrateful and to the wicked. Be merciful then to each other, just as your heavenly Father is merciful. Now, if you're sitting there thinking that this all sounds nice and good on paper, but is hard work, you are right. Paul never says that love feels good or that love is easy. That's another myth of our society, that everything, it, it will come so easily and it will always be there. No, love is challenging. Love is hard at times. And what it takes to truly love is to be vulnerable and to be courageous. Courage means being willing to speak up and speak out about what we need to love and to be loved. Dr. Brene Brown writes that courage is a heart word. And when we think of love, we think of hearts. It was just Valentine's Day. There were hearts everywhere. The heart is where we often put the emotion and the feeling of love. When we think of love, we think of the heart. Well, the root of courage is core. Heart. We tell one's mind from our hearts. Speaking from our hearts and sharing with, uh, with one another is courageous. And we see that when we look to the writers of our scripture. When we look to Jesus who spoke out of his heart and told people about the heart of God. It was courageous and it wasn't always well accepted. In St. Paul, he wrote this beautiful section about what love is and what love isn't and how we are to love one another. But we know that he wasn't always well-loved for his words. He was courageous to speak out about them. And as they, as Jesus and Paul, were courageous in love, Elizabeth and Calvin, you guys are being courageous in love too. You're making this bold step to declare that you want love and you will, will vow to God to love one another in good times and in bad. And accepting this challenge, you are accepting not only to love one another, but to go even one step further than that because we hear that whoever lives in love lives in God and God lives in them. By loving one another, you are showing the world what it means for God's love to live here on earth. And this is a great challenge and worthy of us all to practice. For if we love, St. Paul writes, the world will be better off for it. For love is able to bear all things, believes all things, it hopes all things, it endures all things. Love never ends. May your love for each other never end. And may our loves for all of us here witnessing, may it, our love continue to grow and expand stronger and more beautiful each and every year. Amen.